were you born? 1945, okay. April 15th. And what day was that? What day of the week? I, I really don't know. But my Aunt Martha, Dad's uh, brother and his wife, they had my cousin Janice on the 11th. And she was in the hospital the beginning of the week. So I'm thinking it has to be Thursday or Wednesday or Thursday. I always heard them talking about it, but I guess I really don't know what day. Did your parents tell you anything about the day that you were born on? Anything special? No, no. The, the only thing I ever heard about was always laughing about Janice and I being we were so close and making fun, but they never really said anything, just that the two Mrs. Brady's were in the hospital together. <laughs> And what hospital was that that you were born in? St. Gabriel's in Little Falls. Why were you given the first and middle name? I don't know why, because my cousin that's three months older than me, her name was Diane. And I asked Mom, why did I get named Diane? And she just said, because I like that name. That's all I knew. <laughs> Beyond that, I don't know. <laughs> What's your first most vivid memory of your childhood? I think mainly going to Grandma Rossa's and Grandma Brady's are the things I remember, but if it one of my most, I don't know. <laughs> what was the apartment or house that you grew up in like, and how many bedrooms did it have or bathrooms? <laughs> it was a big brick house on a farm, and I think there was like five bedrooms upstairs, no bathroom, till I was about six years old. I remember them putting it in. We had the outdoor toilet. We had to go down to the barn <laughs> and run back to the house in the winter. <laughs> so that's what I <laughs> remember. And I think I was, and that's probably the same year, six or seven, when we got our first black and white TV, too. <laughs> so when you got the bathroom, did everybody fight over it? No, I was the oldest. So they were, kids were smaller, so they, I don't think there was a whole lot of fighting then. <laughs> so what was your bedroom like? My bedroom was above the kitchen. And it was the, I think it was the biggest, probably the biggest bedroom, because I had two windows, took outside. And then at that time, they never had any heat upstairs. We had registers. And you opened the register and you could see down in the kitchen. And when mom and dad had company, we'd open that register and we'd all lay around that register and listen to them. <laughs> they had their card games and that. Okay, can you describe the neighborhood you grew up in? It was just on a farm and we only had one neighbor. There was no other neighbors around and eventually they got... Uh, Soltis has got their, oh, I think she was her niece and nephew, started living with them. Then we had some kids to play with. Otherwise, it was us alone, us. Well, it would be more or less the four of us. And later on, there's Sandy, Sherry, the younger ones, the other ones. There was nine of us. So it was just, let's see, Donna and Gerald were the neighbor kids. And they'd, they'd come over, we'd go over there, and we'd played. We'd made up games. Or we'd go down to the river, which was just below the hill, swimming, fishing, ice skating, whatever the season was. That was our games. <laughs> so tell me about your parents. Where were they born? When were they born? And what m memories do you have of them? I think mom was, I think, 1921. And she just lived outside of Swanville, just kind of uh, southeast of Swanville on a farm. And I think she, they had lived in a, just kind of like a two-story house that was just one big room downstairs and one big room upstairs. Kind of like a grain way, I guess. It was, but I don't know where mom was born. She was, 
born on the farm, I think. I don't know. And dad, let's see, he was in 1922. And I know grandma and grandpa had a farm or lived out by Holding Ford. But then they also had that farm that dad bought the farm from. So I'm not sure. I guess I never really asked about dad because that the Brady history is not not very clear. Some of that stuff got destroyed in a in a f oh, fire in a courthouse. So well, we have a hard time tracing that one. So that's about what I know. So of the two of them, who was stricter? <laughs> Dad always is stricter. <laughs> Do you have a vivid memory of something that you did that you were disciplined for? Dennis and I always got into trouble because we picked on Donna and <laughs> Geraldine. <laughs> we always got, we either hide in the hay barn or down in the meadow on the rock pile. <laughs> so he'd come looking for you? No, they just, they didn't know where we were. In the hay barn, then we could hear Mom calling for us, but we never answered. <laughs> did your parents have a good marriage? I think they did. I never really seen them arguing and, and that, so I don't know. I think they did. And how did they earn money for your family? Dad had cows, so he sold milk, little pigs. <laughs> what else did he do? Oh, he did work out at uh, at one time. It was called Franklin. I think what now is it called? In St. Cloud, he worked there. And that, so he did work out for a while. I think that's where the bathroom and the TV finally came in because he was able to afford something. <laughs> and what about your mom? Mom just, she was stayed home till most of the kids were out of school, and she worked at uh, St. John's in the kitchen. How did your family compare to others in the neighborhood? Richer, poorer, or the same? <laughs> they were, they were richer than us, but I don't know about the kids, you know, where they, how they were supported, because their father was still alive, but he wasn't much of a father. So I don't know if the neighbors apparently had to take care of them. I really don't know if they adopted them or if they were just living there. So, yeah, I don't know. What kinds of things did your family spend money on? Well, I guess the food and feed and stuff for the cattle. <laughs> and then when the fall come, then we, for school, then we started going for our shoes and, and clothes for school. I never paid no attention. <laughs> How many brothers and sisters do you have? I just have two brothers and six sisters. When were they born? <laughs> I don't remember all their... I, I, can, I know their ages, but most of them, but I don't know what years they were born. So you were the oldest, and yeah. then it came... Dennis, then Donna. Dennis is two years younger than me, and then Donna, and then Geraldine. And I think they're a year apart. And then I think there's a little break with Sandy and then Sherry and then Charlotte. No, Luann and then Charlotte and then Alan. Yeah. Alan was the baby. I remember Alan when when he was oh, he got he was born in August. The same year the tornado hit the barn and destroyed all the sheds and whatever. And he was born it a couple weeks later after that. So I always remember because it was August 4th when the barn went down and Alan's birthday was the 31st. Okay, and your grandparents, where were they born? One was born in Austria and one was born in Czechoslovakia of Grandma and Grandpa Brady. And Grandpa Rasa, I don't know. I remember Grandpa, they always told me the story of him coming over on the ship and he was sick and they wanted to throw him overboard. He was only, I don't know, seven, eight years old. 
something like that. They wanted to throw them overboard so the rest of the people on this ship wouldn't get sick. And I can't remember if it was a brother. I think it was his brother Lawrence. I'm not sure. It was wouldn't let him wouldn't let him take him and throw him over. And Grandpa survived. He didn't he didn't get anybody else sick. I don't know what was ro really wrong with him. That's about the biggest story I've heard about him all these years. So Grandpa was never tossed over. That seems so cool. <laughs> Grandma, I'm not sure where Grandma was born. What memories do you have of each of them when you were growing up? Well, Grandpa Brady always come over because he had a place in holding for it. He'd come over and help us on the farm, whatever, hay, whatever. And he'd always holler at, at us kids. <laughs> you lazy kids, you lazy kids, he'd go. <laughs> And Grandma would always be, whenever Mom had one of the little, one of my brother, one of my sisters, you might as well say, one of the sisters, Grandma always had to take care of us and fix the food, made sure we ate. And before we all went upstairs, she made sure we had castor oil. <laughs> she wanted to make sure we'd go the next morning. <laughs> that was the grossest thing. And if you were sick, she'd make you drink tea. And to this day, I can't stand tea. So I must have been sick a lot. <laughs> she forced me. Do you remember when they died? Grandma Brady died. I don't remember the year. But she died on my birthday. That I remember. <laughs> yeah, She died on my birthday about the same time I was born. It was because on my birth certificate, it has the time that I was born. And Grandma died about that same time on my birthday. And Grandpa, he died about a year and a half after Grandma. Uh, all I remember is Donna and Bill being just left for um, Washington. He was in service. So it had to be during the Vietnam era there because Bill didn't get to go. Bill wasn't over there. And I remember they were over in Washington and that, but I don't remember what year. 69 maybe, something like that. Yeah, so. And Grandpa Rasa, he died. That would probably been in 63. He had Karen was four months old. Yeah, I remember that. He had cancer. And Grandma, oh gosh. Uh, it was in the 80s, I think. Not sure. Because I was the last one to go to the hospital because there was a snowstorm. And I stopped after work to see Grandma, and I was the last one to see her alive. And I remember her feet being so cold and that and I covered him up and I would felt her leg how part of it was cold already it's just weird <laughs> weird about it yeah and that was I think it was December 18th 13th or the 18th something like that she died when you were growing up did you have any pets mm, just dogs and cats in the farm you had all kinds of always had dogs <laughs> and one would get run over and then you'd get another dog and Uncle Nick the one I remember we called Rex Uncle Nick was worked on the highway and one got hurt and he brought it over for us to heal and that dog was crippled but he was he was a real that was probably the closest pet we had because we had him for a long time what were you like as a child suppose like anybody on a farm you had your chores you had your had to milk cows, feed pigs. When we got our stuff done, we took off and went down to the river in the summertime and school, had your school, we walked to school. What did you like to eat? I guess we more or less had mashed potatoes and gravy and I didn't like the liver though. Whenever dad butchered, we'd get fresh liver. 
and on Fridays at that time we couldn't eat meat on Fridays every Friday potato pancakes I hate to this day I can't stand potato pancakes <laughs> that's why I put lots of jelly on them when mom <laughs> where's the jelly <laughs> I love mom's apple pies we had all them apple trees that so when the apples were ready in the summertime, we'd sit out there and eat apples all the time. <laughs> what did you do for fun? Well, basically, yeah, we had to make up games. We did, uh, s sometimes we'd walk to Bolas. The, let's see, there would be all, f let's see, Dennis, Donna, Geraldine, and I. This is now when we got a little older. And then it's Donna and Gerald. We used to walk to Bolas at night. In the evening, we'd walk in the dark <laughs> just to get some pop and candy. And then we'd walk back. And we had to walk past the cemetery. And that was always fun. We'd scare, the boys would always scare us out. And believe me, we did get scared a few times. And then we had to walk past the, coming, got closer to home, there was a deserted place. And that was always scary because I was told, or I remember, a guy hung himself there. So we'd always start talking about <laughs> about this guy that hung himself, you know. So that would scare us too, you know. We'd be walking by and somebody would say something and then we'd start tapping each other and <laughs> doing, <laughs> doing things to scare the other one. What are your favorite toys and games? We didn't have a whole lot of toys. It's not toys like now. We just had girls would have some dolls. And they were usually rubber dolls. And a lot of times they didn't last very long because they just, they weren't, they were ch cheap, I guess you want to say. <laughs> Dennis maybe had a few tractors, little tractors, but other than that, none of the, we didn't have a whole lot of toys. Mom and Dad couldn't afford them. Did you ever have a secret place or a favorite hiding spot? Oh yeah, that rock pile in the in the barn, or sometimes in the corn crib too. And there was in the machine shed. There was another place we had. Oh yeah, we could find a lot of places on the on a farm after the hay was stacked in the one shed. We could hide in there, hide behind the bales. We'd leave a spot open. <laughs> what did you wear? I had, I was fortunate enough to get a lot of hand-me-downs from my rich relatives in Ohio. <laughs> so it was shorts and blouses and stuff like that. Basically what I'm wearing nowadays, I guess. Grandma, was she ever a seamstress? She did, yeah, she did when I started school. She would make a bunch of dresses for me then. But as the more kids came, they were able to get some of my clothes, but then I think They've got probably a little more money where they could start buying some stuff. I don't think she sewed as much for the other ones. But I know I had plenty of dresses and that for a while. Plus the rich relatives' clothes. <laughs> Did you get an allowance? No. No. Sometimes, though, on Fridays, we always had to go to catechism and... When catechism was done, we always went to Butch and Margaret's, just a little 3-2 joint, and wait for Dad because Dad would get off work because there was, I think, well, car loads. So I suppose about six guys would ride together, five, six guys. So we probably got pop and candy then. That could be considered our allowance. <laughs> what responsibilities did you have at home when you were young? taking care of the younger ones and then we also had to milk cows bring the cows in we had a lot of times we had to bring the cows home before we went to school and get them in the barn sometimes if we had enough time we milked them feed the pigs do dishes laundry help with the clothes basically <laughs> cook even at times when you had to what kind of school did you go to the good old country school one room <laughs> one room school with about 30 kids in one one building. <laughs> Were you a good student? Sometimes. <laughs>
the times I had to stay after, well, we made sure that the others slowed down so I could catch up when any, because <laughs> we had to walk. <laughs> so whenever any of us had to stay behind, we made sure that we were all home at the same time so mom would never find out. <laughs> but that was being mischievous out on the playground or something. Or sometimes it was class too. <laughs> Did you have a favorite subject? Nah, not really. A least favorite? In the country school there, we more or less had reading, writing, arithmetic. It was not all these other kind of classes that you have now. Even once again in high school, it was, well, then you had typing and gym. and We didn't have gym in country school. It was recess, and then we all played games outside. It was not, not no exercise like the high school when we had... It was just playing games or sitting around, whatever. <laughs> Did you have a favorite teacher or was it the same teacher year after year? I think it was like three years of each one, two to three. It was a Mrs. Ronyak, Mrs. Borsch, Mrs. Oplinski. That one I hated. I could not stand that woman. <laughs> so who were your friends in school? Oh, Benita. Bag and uh, well, Booth. No, she was ba she's bag and stuff now. Benita Booth. Her and I were the only two girls in the class, and there was three boys in my grade. We hung around together, but the other three boys, we all got along good, you know, in that because we played softball with them or baseball, whatever they had played. Dog a game they called dog. <laughs> Dodgeball. How does dog go? Kind of like dodgeball, I guess, same thing, you know. They just give it different names. Played Annie Over with that Mrs. Borsch. She just passed away last year. We had a, let's see, we were 50 years out of the, maybe it was longer than last year. Anyhow, we had a 50-year get-together with the five of us from the, from the country school, from the eighth grade. And we had asked her to come to the, get together because that was the only teacher left that was alive and we told her that we played Annie over and one of the guys from my class threw the ball over and hit the the mirror that on her car it was her husband's car because something was wrong with her car so when he come around nobody threw a ball he come around we all ran and hid and he he didn't know why till he saw the light, the mirror busted. So we told her about it, and she said her husband was dead now at that time. And she said she caught heck. He goes, can't you even back out of that garage without smashing anything? <laughs> so she didn't know it was us that or us group playing ball. <laughs> she just finally found out last year two years ago, whatever it was when we were out of, <laughs> maybe it's about, I don't remember how many years ago it was now. So yeah, but it was nice to see her, you know, and she's telling us some of the things that she remembered about us. <laughs> Did you have any heroes or role models as a child? No, not really. How did you spend your summer holidays? We went to Missouri. Yeah, later, I think, and later in my life, I went to Missouri, and you guys, yeah. Other than that, whenever I was home, Mom and Dad always went to Duluth. I said I had some cousins that lived out there, but I, n I never, ever got to go because I had to stay home with the little ones. That always made me mad. So <laughs> I was always babysitting. <laughs> Probably didn't have a big enough vehicle to take everybody. Could be. Could be, yeah, uh, because Dad had that Ford. I think it was a Galaxy or something like that. But it wasn't the big Galaxy. It was a smaller one. Lime green. <laughs> Any favorite summer activities? Just in the evenings when we, the neighbors would come over. Or if there were ev even during the day, you know, when they we were free, when there was no hay hauling or anything like that, then we'd. Go down to the river, swim. How about other holidays, like Thanksgiving, New Year's? 
days you get together with relatives. When, uh, the big thing at Christmas was all every year going to Grandma Ross's. And everybody would, moms, uh, brothers and sisters, all would join. And then I think once Grandpa died, it kind of slowed down, you know. Plus then the rest, the, uh, the other ones started getting married and it just seemed like that was, you know, everybody had to go their own way or different, you know. The guys would always have to go to the wives' family and slowly, slowly changed. And then pretty soon Grandma got too old, so we'd only go there whenever we could. And Grandma Brady's was always in January, their Christmas, and that was... Well, she, they belonged to the Russian Orthodox Church, close to the Catholic, I guess. And we had to go there like January 6th. And first thing we had to do was eat mushroom soup, homemade mushroom soup. And that was the grossest thing. <laughs> and then she had, well, then it was her tradition, all that stuff and that. And, uh, yeah, I remember the one year I really was sick, and they said I had to eat it. Aunt Martha, you have to eat that. I said, but I don't feel good. Just take a couple spoonfuls. Well, I did, and nobody else could eat after I got through vomiting. <laughs> so then after that, nobody was ever forced to eat that soup. <laughs> it was so gross. Was it a recipe of theirs? Yeah, but it was mushrooms you pick out in the woods, you know. Well, there's nothing wrong with the mushrooms. But then we we had to string them in the summer, we had to str or fall, had to string them on a string and hang them in the shed till they dried for winter for this soup for Christmas. And it was, it was gross. And that, the thought of that just gags me now. <laughs> was that like the, one of their traditions? That was one of the traditions, babalki. I've made that here. That, that's what we wanted to get at first, you know. But we never could. We had to have that soup first. That all came at the same? And the same meal, you know. But it was just, it's the way Grandma wanted us to eat that stuff. Other than that tradition, did you have other traditions that the family partook in? Well, we got the Easter, too, we'd get together. Even at Grandma Ross's, we'd go. And Grandma Brady's, I don't know. We did some there, but more or less went out. See, Grandma Brady lived just in Bola, so we'd see her at church and that and whatever, and she maybe come over to the house for a while because Grandpa would drive over and have something at the house, and then later on we'd go to Grandma Ross's and that. So, yeah, we kind of fit them both in that later years. But Other than the babalki? And that soup, was there other things too, other foods? Well, yeah, there was cheeses. Grandma would make certain kind of cheese, set that, you know, it was, it was good. I liked it, but it just, the idea of the way it was made, it doesn't seem like it would be any good. And, oh, I can't remember what all. Then they had their mashed potatoes and gravy and, and chicken or roast pork. What was the best? gift you remember receiving as a child? The first time I got a present that I could remember from my godmother, a flowered skirt. <laughs> That'd probably be, I was so excited because I finally got something from my godmother. <laughs> what did you do when you grew up? Oh, I got married. How old were you? 17. Do you remember any big world events? When you were growing up? Yeah, I remember when Kennedy got shot. That I remember what what I was doing, too. <laughs> Just driving out of the yard from your Grandpa checks. And we heard it on the radio. So then we went up and watched, watched the deal on te television at gram Grandma. Would be your great-great-grandma on the farm went and watched it on there because your grandma check didn't have the one other grandma check didn't have tv so we went over there and watched it so other than that 
Nine one one till two. <laughs> I don't know which other ones. What inventions do you remember most? How fast the cars can go now since <laughs> when <laughs> when we were young, man. There's speed now. All the fancy different vehicles, snowmobiles and four wheelers and oh man. Yeah, there's a lot of changes. What's different about growing up today from when you were growing up? The kids have lots of toys. Lots more, yes. Lots more. And, and video games and cell phones and all the little dilly bops they can put on the phone <laughs> or whatever they call them now. iPads and whatever. Yeah, I, that's big change. I don't know what we'd do if we had them ba way back then. We'd be in sec seventh heaven. <laughs> When you were a teenager, what did you do for fun? Went to the old Elmdale Bar, or dance hall. There was a bar and dance hall and on day when they had dances then. And then going to bolus. We'd always wander into bolus. Sometimes basketball games. Other than that, not much. Still didn't have all the stuff you guys have now. <laughs> what time did you have to be home at night? They never really said anything. But then I always, a lot of times I'd go to Bonita's, so. And her dad would always pick us up at midnight, whatever. Did you ever get into trouble when you were a teenager? Oh, yeah, lots of times. So I'd say I was over there, and she would say she was over in my place. <laughs> Anything that could be shared on camera? Yeah. <laughs> not me, I'm not sharing no more. <laughs> Were there any kind of phrases that were popular when you were a teenager? I don't even remember any of them. What did you like to wear at that time? Then we wore a lot of dresses and skirts with the big can-cans, big, poofy, and then starch them things. The stiffer the better, the further, more poofy underneath. I remember them. Hmm. That was for the going out to the dances? Yeah, some of them had them poodles on the side. That, that was a popular one then, too. So I even got some of them from my rich relatives in Ohio. <laughs> and those kind of dresses, your parents didn't really, they weren't particular about what you wore back then? No. No, because they didn't have such revealing clothes as they do now. <laughs> When did you learn how to drive, and who taught you? I was 19, and I taught myself. <laughs> Put Karen in the car, and, <laughs> and we'd drive down the big long driveway and turn around and come back. What was your first car like? I remember it was yellow and white Ford. I don't, don't remember if it was Fairlane or something like that. It was a two-tone. Fairlane, and then there was Fairlane 500, and there was a Galaxy, and I don't know, way back then. <laughs> Probably don't even make them anymore. <laughs> How did you decide what to do with your life? I don't know. I have no clue. I'm trying to figure out where my life is to go now. I don't know where. Well, you're the owner of a lumber yard now. Yeah. And I didn't want to be the sole owner of a lumber yard. I just, it just uh, a tough decision I have to do now. What was your first job? I was, I had lived with uh, Teresa and Lloydie Fusi babysitting their three kids for $15 a week. <laughs> that was my first job. What did you like or not like about it? I don't know, I guess it was okay, because basically it was the same things I had to do at home, except for I didn't do no farm chores, you know, it was cleaning, cooking, stuff like that. Tommy used to make me mad because he swore so much. But I, I cut that out on him. I put a bar of soap in his mouth. But he kind of changed his tone. <laughs> what job did you do most of your life? I worked at IWCO for 22 years. It was a 
it was a fun job for a lot of years and then they got a different boss and it it was more push 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 and and uh to the grindstone and that it was sorting mail direct mail or what we couldn't say then was junk mail that's what it was or <laughs> your file 13 but i liked that at the quite a few years in there too I worked there 22 and a half. Munsingwear I liked. I worked there for 14. That was always, that was fun too. But then Japanese bought us out and bye bye goes the good job. So. What did you like the most about it or the least about it? I liked the people I worked with in that. And it wasn't that hard of a job till they start getting heavier and, and, uh, changing the sorting so much because it was real basic at first and, and now the sort the mail is so different the zip codes and then the barcodes on there they're all oh it's so different and different areas have different rulings and register the way they want them done and so yeah it was a challenge then there's a lot of mind work too making sure you were going to doing it the right way Otherwise, you had to go through the boxes and do it over. <laughs> That's what I hated, you know, stuff like that. So the boxes were pre-labeled. You got you got to put the label on it where it's going. There's zip codes on there. And in the later years, the, everything was pre-printed, where we had to write out the tag earlier and. In my early years working there, you had you had to write out the tag and the zip code and that. Later on, everything you just made sure you got the right stuff in that tray and the right stuff in that bag. We had the mail bags too, and then later they cut out the mail bags only for certain jobs. So yeah, it was it was a challenge. Got to be heavy too because then the poundage started getting more and more. So yeah, it was a challenging job. Did you ever get married? Yep. How did you meet your spouse? Jim. <laughs> Do I have to say your dad? <laughs> I don't. I don't want to talk about that part. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to talk about that. That's. I'm trying to leave that behind me. But I met Jim. One day when. One day when your dad was, working late or whatever, Jeannie and I took off with the f snowmobiles racing down the road past where Jim lived. And Jeannie and I were alongside of one another and then all of a sudden, you know, she wasn't coming and so I stopped and I'm waving her on, waving her on and she's hitting the throttle. So finally I turn around and come back. She lost the track. So we thought, uh-oh, how are we gonna do this? because that's heavy. And then here comes Jim, that's the first time I met him. And he uh, picked that up, snowmobile, threw it in the back end of the truck and brought it to our house. And Jeannie and I had to explain what happened afterwards. And then, I don't know, after throughout the years, that's it was the first time I met him anyhow. Throughout the years was playing softball and stuff like that. Got to know one another, of course he was coach. So, other than that, I don't know. So, what did you like about him? Well, I don't know. It took me a long time. Well, after he got a divorce and I got a divorce, then I don't know what what led me to him. Do you remember anything about the engagement? How and when? Yeah, on Christmas Eve. He wrapped a big box up. And another box, another box, another box, till I got to the small box. And the ring was in there. <laughs> Did you have an idea that he was going to propose? No, not really. No, I didn't. When did you get married? In August 24th, 1991. How old were you at that time? I don't know. Don't remember. Do you remember your wedding day or what it was like? Yeah, it was... It was a nice day, fun time at the park, 
Yeah, it was a good day. Where did you get married at? Swanville Church. Do you remember your first big purchase that you made together? Probably the lumber yard. <laughs> Which he left me with now. <laughs> so do you have any favorite stories about your children? <laughs> mm, favorite stories? I guess I never guess I really didn't don't tell stories about you guys. Is that good? Bad. What is the most memorable family vacation you took? Missouri. Going to, a couple times going to Aunt Anne's and Uncle Larry's. I think we went more than once, huh? Or just once. Yeah, I remember going and we got to St. Cloud and Kenny says, are we there yet? <laughs> Dad went with us. Yeah. I guess I made quite a, quite a few trips down there. I guess I didn't realize it was just once with your kids. I think I went for weddings and that and anniversaries, and you probably got your kids stayed behind. Yeah, probably right. What do you remember about holiday celebrations? Oh, sometimes they were fun, and sometimes they were just uh, another day. You know, I don't know. There was, we've had fun, lots of fun. Is there one holiday memory that stands out for you? Yeah, the last year Wayne had. Yeah, you were sick, or you just had your surgery, and uh, Wayne was sick. That one I always hold in my <laughs> special, you know. Do you remember what about that? Just because we were all together at that last one, or? I think at that time, we all thought Wayne was cured of his cancer, and then to find out a few weeks later he's dead. That was the hardest. So how do you feel about raising your children? Oh, I think I'm proud of every one of them. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> some, sometimes some of them get me a little angry. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing Kenny and Deb getting married. And uh, maybe Jeannie not going to the casino so much. Being she's so broke now and that. Sometimes I wish Karen wasn't so far away. What's the best part of watching your children grow? Seeing what they all accomplished, the lives they're living. It's Even my dad had made a comment one month before he died. said, Diane, you did a good job raising your kids. And dad, one month later, was gone. And what's the hardest part? about raising children? Having to do so much myself. <laughs> that I think was hard, you know. I felt I should have had more help. What's the best thing about being a parent? Grandkids and great grandkids. <laughs> do you know the meaning of your family name? No. Have you ever had any nicknames as a child or as an adult? And what were they and what did they come from? The one I guess I can remember is playing softball. They'll call me, what was it, Dinah. Instead of calling me Diane, they call me Dinah. Everybody called me Dinah. So whatever. <laughs> and that was when you were older. Did you have any when you were like a kid? No, this is when, uh, when we all played softball and I don't know how many years back. You and Karen and Jeannie and I was probably calling each other bad names when we were kids on the farm. <laughs> but I don't think there was any that stuck with us. How were you like your mother, or unlike her? I think everybody has traits of their mother in s some ways. Sometimes a person doesn't even think that about it, and you're doing things the way your mother did. You know, it's just natural, I guess. I don't know. How are your children like you, or unlike you? Uh, I don't know. Because every, each one of you are all in a different, are, are all different types of jobs. So I don't know who followed me or is like me. I don't know. Maybe Kenny is more like me because he's the only one that really went to gardening. <laughs> I don't know. Karen is in clothing and whatever nurse and well now Jeannie's in the hospital though too so 
interesting. What do you think are your three best qualities? Probably in crafting and <laughs> gardening. Maybe not so much gardening anymore. It's getting pretty hard. Now it's just to keep the place up and try to sell the lumber yard. Do you have any bad qualities? Going to the casino with Jeannie. <laughs> Do you have any special sayings or expressions that you... No, not really, I don't think. Did you have a favorite book or a favorite movie that you liked? Mm, books? No, I really don't read much. Although I did like that Minnesota 13. <laughs> the, back in the probation days with the... Uh, yeah, the stills. If you had three wishes, what would they be? Well, that Jim didn't die on my trip. He'd still be here. <laughs> I could sell the lumber yard and figure out where my life is supposed to go now, <laughs> being he left me with all this. That's right now, it's where, where and why did all this happen? If you had a million dollars tomorrow, what would you do with the money? <laughs> I'd pay off the lumber yard and maybe give it to somebody. <laughs> And then decide what I, where my life was to go now. I don't know. I suppose I'd have to share it with the kids. <laughs> Do you know what your most memorable phone call that you received ever was? Memorable phone call? No. What's a typical day like for you right now? I get up in the morning, right around 6, go for my walk. Go down to the lumber yard at 7.30 and stay there for a couple hours. Go to cafe, have coffee, come home, do some work around the house, crafts, wander through the garden, trying to figure out where I'm going. <laughs> How is that different from your daily routines in the past? Well, uh, when Jim was alive, I didn't have to go down to the lumber yard. Still went for my walk every morning, but other than that, it was just you're taking care of the house and outside and stuff like that. So if you can compare the present, is it better or worse than when you were younger? Uh, yes and no. My uh, situation, I would say, is a little, I don't know, a little better, but not a little worse, though, too, because I kind of know what my situation for money-wise is now, which I knew back then, because Jim never worried about money. Oh, we'll just make more. We'll just make more. But now with him, the big challenge is that lumber yard to get rid of that. Then I can figure out. And when he was alive, he never worried about any of that. He he always thought I was silly about it. But there, you know, I don't know. So it's a it's a big challenge to figure out which way. Yeah, it was better when he was alive, but now. You know. So what do you do for fun now? Well, once in a while I go with Sue to the casino. Thursdays I go to Weight Watchers. And then after that, a friend or two will go have breakfast. Sit around. But other than that, I haven't done much of anything. What things are the most important to you now? I think my children and grandchildren. Great-grandchild. <laughs> and the one coming up. <laughs> yeah, other than that, yeah. And Jim's son, Brian, has been real good, too. And his kids, they're almost almost like my own. It's a shame that it, Gwen had to be the one kind of blocking Brian from coming out here a lot because if, if Brian was coming, then she wouldn't come. And stuff like that made me mad, you know. But I just left it be because I didn't want to get into a family squabble between Jim and I, you know, and their his kids and my kids, you know. Or if my kids were coming around and seemed like Gwen Gwen could never, I know, mingle with you guys. I don't know why it was. I have no clue. So that that was hard too. So there are some ages that we don't look forward to. What birthday were you least enthusiastic about? I think when I hit fifty. <laughs> because I knew it was, I knew that I really am getting older. <laughs> and then 60 comes along. I'm like, oh my God. 
Now I'm just knocking at the door of 70. It's like, holy crap. <laughs> How do you feel now about growing old? I don't know. I don't know. Somewhat lonely and wondering what's what's going to happen in the future, you know. Because the place here is too big for me, which your brother keeps telling me. And that. And I had no plans, or we had no plans of moving yet. These are decisions that I'm going to have to make, and I don't like it. <laughs> I expected to be here a lot longer on this place, but I don't know. I guess time will tell. Time will tell. What do you think the hardest thing is about growing older? Those choices or? The choices, yeah. And even even your body <laughs> aching. And <laughs> you know, I mean, I've got one knee replacement already, and I need the other one, but trying to be tough so yes yeah, so it's how your body reacts to getting older the things you used to do you can't do or have to take more breaks to <laughs> do them in how should a person prepare for old age how can you prepare well i suppose you gotta have plenty of money to survive and try to keep healthy try to keep active I mean that's that part of keeping active is what's helping me right now. Did you have any other expectations, like for at this point in your life, what growing older would be like for you? Yeah, I, I expected uh, us to get rid of the lumber yard and him and I to go on more trips and that and, and uh, do more things. And But it, like I said, it didn't work out. Is there anything that you wish you could have done differently? Yeah, force him to his health, force him to have a better health life than he did. Force him harder. Push him. So, yeah. That'd be the biggest thing. But he wouldn't listen anyhow. So, if you live another 20 to 30 years, what do you think you'll do? <laughs> I don't know what I'll be doing. I don't think I'll be doing wood crafts. Maybe sewing quilts. <laughs> Do you want to live another 20 to 30 years? Uh, what would that bring me to? I don't know. It would be nice if my health would be, you know, stay good. What have you thrown away in your life that you wish you hadn't? I don't know. It's probably a lot of things a person could think of after, after the fact, you know. You're not a hoarder? I got a lot of craft stuff, but no. <laughs> What junk have you held on to? <laughs> My craft stuff. That's not junk, though. Jim always said it was junk. You know what the best advice your grandparents ever gave you or your parents? No. If you could write a message to each of your children and grandchildren and put it in a time capsule for them to read 20 years from now, what would you write to each of them? Probably would. would. Jeannie, I hope you're not still not going to the casino. Yeah. Kenny, I hope you and Deb finally got married. Janet, I hope you got a lot more grandkids. <laughs> Karen, I wish you weren't so far away. <laughs> then do I have to start on Kyle? I don't know. <laughs> I'd have to think about each one of the kids, grandkids. Mm -hmm. And it'd probably just not be one day thing about it either. What would you like your children and grandchildren to remember about you? I don't know, just that they don't forget about me. <laughs> Having the fun times at Christmas, <laughs> Easter, the Easter egg hunts <laughs> that I started when <laughs> Tyler and Kayla and Travis and Nicole. <laughs> that seemed to last forever. 